Welcome back, Daniel Browning here. I'm with the artist Anna Miller at Purple Noon Gallery, and we're here to talk about her exhibition, Waking Dreamland. Let's begin here with this extraordinary set piece, Anna. Tell me about this dress. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I made this dress, and it's from a very old pattern and purchased it overseas, and so I had to sort of lay it all down and put all the bits and pieces together like a jigsaw. Um, but I had a lot of fun, a bit of heartache, but I really enjoyed doing it. I want to make more, it was so much fun. And um, I think we have the pattern yeah. to the original dress here. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Yeah, it was a bit crazy. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. Massive. It's upside down, I think, but it doesn't matter. I don't awesome. even understand. <laughs> not, <laughs> not a language. <laughs> but, um, Fabulous. And yeah. let's talk about I mean, it's clearly, uh, you know, in the, in the French style, something that Marie Antoinette would have worn, uh, the Queen of France, the, the guillotined Queen of France. Yeah. And she's actually a figure in, in some of your artworks. Yeah. What, what does Marie Antoinette, the I, Queen of France, represent? Yeah, I was just fascinated by her life. And I suppose, too, I started making these strange headpieces myself. And I thought, what sort of person does that? And then I stumbled upon uh, Marie Antoinette. So I've actually put her, my doll's house on her head here. Um, but uh, I'm fascinated too, and I know Daniel, you've been to the place in France, how she has a small village and so on. Yeah, well, she, we know that Marie Antoinette loved to dress as a milkmaid. Yeah. And she has a working dairy farm on the estate of Versailles called Le Hameau. Yeah. Um, Let's face it, Marie Antoinette was bonkers. <laughs> um, but it's incredible to see what, what I love about this image, um, the Australian back, background um, in this clearly kind of dissonant image, yeah. mm. the Baroque and the kind of Australian super, superimposed. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And let's look at this one over here. I'm particularly fascinated with the model uh, that you use yeah, in these artworks. A relative of yours? Or a relative yeah, of your Imogen, she's just gorgeous inside and out. Um, yeah, I just love how this has turned out and to me there's a bit of sort of pattern on the top which I really liked coming through but she was just magic um, to photograph and I'm just so happy with how they all turned out and all the beautiful detail and the dress just looked magic on her and yeah I really enjoyed it. Yeah I like that juxtaposition between the clearly European yep, and the sure. Baroque and the Australian it's fascinating but can we talk about these ones over here slightly sure. Harlequin-esque figures yeah. Uh, is this a, an actual, is this a, the face of a doll that looks like a china or a bisque doll? Yeah, it's um, yeah, a rather large doll. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this, this one is actually, I actually made all her outfit out of paper besides the layers that are on top. And this is another shoot that was inside a, a bathtub. So there's so many layers to this one and the little chandeliers. Um, yeah, this one has got a werewolf sort of skeleton doll sort of stuff. But that's the same person across, you wouldn't think so, but... It's great what you can do. And these, these are, you're fascinated with architecture. You, know, you can see some architecture in yeah. this work. What this, these arches, you're fascinated by the old and, uh, and deco and kind of colonial architecture of Sydney. Oh, definitely. And like, it just blew me away when I went to New York, just seeing the buildings. And I, um, but yeah, when I had a teacher when I was at TAFE and he used to take us on excursions every week. And we just see the absolute beauty in the buildings and we write about it the following week. And I was just so, I just really loved that. So it was great. And let's go over here. I'm fascinated with the, um, the, the disco ball kind of element, <laughs> you know, we're, we're of a generation, you know, we spent a lot of time in the clubs. But this one, <laughs> this one, this particular figure here was the candelabra uh, head. Tell me a little bit about how you conceive of that work. What's going on there? Um, I just love, chandeliers to be honest and the, and when i moved to the area i've moved to bowen mountain with my partner and my little three-year-old our three-year-old sorry um i just it's just the beauty of the country and that's from an area in richmond most of the things that were um the artworks the the content that was shot was in bowen mountain which is where we live and it's just magic it reminds me of my grandmother who um we'd visit when we were little in, in Maitland and I just loved it, the pepper trees, everything about it, so. All right, let's move around the exhibition. So Anna, tell me about the, the frames are quite, quite fantastic as well. I mean, the artworks are beautiful, but the, the frames as well. Yeah, I just, I just find them, uh, like the architecture, I just love anything vintage pretty much and I wanted to evoke 
with a sort of dreamy goldy sort of silver tones to come across through my work as well so I just thought it was important to go all the way and have it from the beauty inside and out pretty much so there's an authenticity in the frames and to what's being what's being depicted yeah. the kind of antique and um, the obsessive kind of detail the baroque yeah I just it's funny when you put it all together and things like that too I just keep thinking like the history and, and where else you know soaked up um, I just find it really fascinating but I just love detail I just think it's yeah and the location here this is an orange grove yeah orange grove in uh, Richmond's area so we're talking local everything's local pretty area. local that's in this room yeah beautiful thank you and I think down here we we're seeing elements of the uh, central kind of if you like the central inspiration the central artwork and the exhibition and, the, and this is the dollhouse here yeah. I, I think a rear view we can see the chandelier which lights up here in the background and all those disembodied dolls <laughs> with their doily heads um but again the Marie Antoinette figure yeah this was one of my favorite images I just love uh Imogen's look there in her eyes when she's looking down here I just think she looks absolutely stunning um yeah and I just had a lot of fun making it a bit more dreamlike in a way, but yeah, she just looks magic. Uh, this was the, this one here, um, I actually made the frame, uh, the frame I purchased, but I made these out of um, doilies and so on, just bringing my prop background into the whole concept of it all. And so where do you buy the frames? I mean, are they, are they reproductions or are they actual original old frames? Um, a lot of them are original, yeah, from everywhere and anywhere. Um, yeah, I, I, it's just been a really good experience. So, to me, um, I actually, one of my friends gave me a whole, um, like this one here, this beautiful turquoise bag. As you can see, I quite like turquoise. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot of elements that played the key part, which um, steered me in the direction of having, uh, having this exhibition also focused on Marie Antoinette. So. She's a divisive figure, Marie Antoinette. I mean, we know she lost her head for crimes against the people and, of course, the French Revolution. She was, she's a figure from history, but at a, at a deeper level, I guess she also represents something else. I mean, you don't know a great deal about the history. That's not necessarily of interest. But what it is, is kind of what she represents, the kind of visual splendour, the um, kind of belle epoque of the French Empire. Yeah, I just find it really fascinating. And you love the style. I do, I do. Fashion is yeah. really important to you. It is. I wish when I did my degree that I actually did fashion design because I just love making things. And I mean, I still make things with my hands and so on, but I'm going to dive further in. Um, yeah, it's been good fun. And I think there is a genre of artists who's working particularly with this kind of, these kind of you know, extraordinary, extraordinary detailed sets. Um, fashion photographers who become fine art practitioners. So there's, there's definitely a kind of a genre. Of, of people who you know have worked in the fashion industry in photography fashion photography who have gone on to become you know what we would call contemporary artists so you're not alone <laughs> let's keep moving this one is interesting it's it strikes me as being kind of not really it, it, yes yeah, slightly otherworldly in relation to the rest of the artwork um, and I think it's a, I think it's the colors and I think it's the content tell me about this one yeah, that was at the orchards as well. I've made it a bit more sort of trippy, I suppose, with the dolls, um, this beautiful doll that I found as well. But this little piece up here, it's a little crocheted piece of um, some swans that my grandmother actually made. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's got a lot to it that I, I found a, a good journey. And this object here, is it the object that's reflected in this artwork? Yeah. So oh, these are set pieces, props from the artwork. The, yeah, yeah, I, a, lot, a lot of that's, uh, it's not this one, but there's another one in the room hiding. But um, yeah, and the background is actually the view from our balcony in Bowen Mountain. It's just absolutely stunning. Yeah. What, in the morning? Um, that was when it was a bit foggy in the afternoon. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Um, I remember these crocheted swans. They used, they used to be, used to be able to, they were holders for jewellery. They were kind of um, embroidered into doilies. I, I remember seeing them. My, my mum had a collection, I think. But yeah, you put your jewellery in them, yeah. all kinds of crazy things. Um, and lastly over here, this kind of image of the, the sunflower children. Yeah, this is one of my favourites actually. Um, 
it's various artworks combined, but um, I really like the fact that this reminds me, because as you know, I love Alice in Wonderland, but this reminds me of the rabbit, sort of, I think, if it's mm -hmm. inundated and sitting up. Um, and then I've cut out uh, Imogen, uh, character Marie Antoinette, and bought this other beautiful mirror piece here. Um, but yeah, I just, it's very fairy tale, this one. It's one of my favourites. And um, yeah, I had a lot of fun putting little faces in the, the flowers that I purchased. Mm. I love sunflowers. It's my favourite. Well, one of my favourites, yeah. Thank you. So, Anna, thank you so much for walking me around um, Waking Dreamland. Anything you'd like to say um, before you go about, you know, what, what, what visitors could expect if we didn't live in, in socially distant times and COVID-19 wasn't, yeah. wasn't a worry? Well, all I can say is thank you very much, and to Robin, you've been amazing. And I just wanted to say, It'd be great if you could come along and visit because it'd be great to see the interior to the doll's house. And thank you. Excellent. <laughs>